trying to get us off task. Yeah. 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 I don't care how many times you practice and how many times you rehearse. Satan's going to always do what he wants to do but God. You know? And that's why we praise the Lord. No matter what our trials may be, we still say hallelujah. No matter what we're going through, God, you deserve to be praised at all times. For some reason, we've been programmed that when trials come, we run away from God. But we're supposed to run to Him. Because that's how you fight the battle. That's how you fight and be saved. I have to continue to remind myself that the word says pray without ceasing. That means continue prayer over and over and over. And Destiny, I'm here to remind you this morning, if you don't have the words to say, just call on the name Jesus. 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 Anybody going through something this morning? Anybody struggling this morning like me? Because I am. I'm going to be transparent. Yeah. So what we're going to do together to get through and push through whatever you're going through, we're going to just sing this together. And I want to hear your voices loud because sometimes we depend on everybody who's on the platform, but it's a collective situation when we come in the house of worship corporately. Be praised. Be praised. Come on all over the room. Be
that you ran around the church. It's something wrong. <laughs> Is both transformation and transformation. 
transcendent, then surely healing leprosy is in this ballpark. Surely healing leprosy is in this wheelhouse. Surely healing leprosy is in this scope of sagacity. So Jesus, Master, have mercy. Lean in, family. Let me tell you why I like them. I like them because they were strategic. I like it because strategically they did not ask for healing. They asked for mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strategically, yeah. they feared that just in case our healing yeah. is based on merit, Mama. let's take merit out of the equation. Mama. So they asked for mercy because mercy is receiving from God what I don't deserve from God. Jesus saw. Mm -hmm. Come here. Because while 
hearing someone's cry for help is important. Seeing them implies a deeper level of engagement and recognition. Seeing suggests being fully aware of one's condition physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I'm going somewhere. So what this narrative is telling us is that without saying a word, Jesus was aware of their suffering, their situation, and their solution. And what is resonating with me in this text is that there are times when people can hear you and not see you. Because people hear you with their head, but they see you with their heart. And what Jesus is saying then, and he's saying now, watch this, I see you. Yes. I see your hurt. Yes. I see your confusion. Yes. Yes. I see your disappointment. Yeah. I see your frustration. frustration. Yes. Yes. I see your pain. Yes. I see your loss. Mm -hmm. I, I see you. I, I see your value. Mm -hmm. I see your worth. Mm -hmm. I see your significance. Mm -hmm. I see that you try. Yes. I see that you fight. I see that you struggle. I see that you're pressing. I see that you're enduring. I see you. I see you still making a dollar out of 15 cents. I see, I see you. I, I see that you are more than the sum of your total. I see. I see behind the mask that you show the world. I, I see the little boy inside of a grown man. I see the struggling woman who's a boss in a misogynistic culture. I, I see you. <laughs> we, we, we see in this text that the ten asked Jesus for mercy. And Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. May, may I make the sanctified leap that the first step of receiving the mercy of God is self-awareness. Right. Jesus says, if you want mercy, stop masking your misery and show the church your authenticity. Stop just revealing that part of yourself that you feel is acceptable but show the church that part, like the leprosy, that's disfigured. Just show the church that part that's not easy to look at or hear about. Show the church the hurt that's internal, even though it's tolerable. Show the church that part that has caused you to be isolated and ostracized. Show the church that part that comes up in your life out of nowhere that you can't seem to get rid of. Yeah. Can, can yeah. I say it like I feel it? Show the church your crisis that needs Christ. Yeah. Could Jesus be telling us in this text that you can only get healed when you're willing to go get help? Yeah. That the reason you still have a wound is because you keep picking at the scab? Yeah. That the reason why many of us are stagnant is because instead of facing our insufficiencies, we hide them behind our proficiencies? Jesus is telling the ten members the first step to receiving the mercy of God is the self-awareness that you are worth being seen. Amen. I need somebody to say it because you've never told yourself this lately. Let me say I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I'm not perfect, but I'm worth it. I'm, I'm flawed, but I'm worth it. I've got more clarities, but I'm worth it. I don't have two pennies to run together, but
going to take walking in faith and not our feelings mm. to receive his favor. Mm. That, that, that even when you don't feel like it, mm. try it. Mm. Commit to it. Yeah. Do it again. Mm -hmm. Call him again. Resubmit the proposal again. We apply for the position again. Hit the gym again. Lift the weights again. And because you are willing to trust God by faith and not your feelings, God's going to grant you favor yes. right naturally and yeah. emotionally yes. and relationally and physically yes. and yes. spiritually. And all God is saying in this moment in your life, just do it. Just do it. Now, I got to tell you something. There was something about this new text that, uh, that bothered me. Uh, I was troubled why Jesus told the ten lepers to show himself to the priest. Let me tell you why I bother me. Priests don't heal. And the lepers needed healing. Now that what me. Priests don't have the capacity to do anything regarding leprosy except to declare that you are either clean or unclean. Then it hit me. Jesus needed what he was about to do, declare done by someone who was authorized to declare it. Right. Okay. Okay. Come on, baby. Just like when Gabriel announced that Mary would conceive as a virgin and bear a son named Jesus. Just like when an angel of the Lord announced to the shepherds in the field, I bring you glad tidings of great joy that in the town of David the Savior has been more just. Like when God announced to Abram that because of, of your faithfulness, you're going to be the father of many nations and I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham just. Like when an angel announced to the women after the crucifixion, he ain't here, but he's risen just like he said he was. It is Jesus needed the lepers declared clean, so he sent them to a decorator. Okay, 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 okay. He sent them to someone who had the authority to declare they were clean. Jesus needed the priests to speak into their lives and tell them something they have been wanting, something they have been needing, something they have been waiting to hear for the longest yes. that they were clean. In other words, Jesus needed the priests to speak into their lives. Yes, yes, yes. That's my assignment, because I'm your pastor. Mm -hmm. The next two minutes I'm going to speak uh -huh. into your life and let you know that you are loved. Yes. And you are valued. Yes. And God has a purpose for your life. And you are a blessing. And your faith is inspiring. And God's grace is at work in you. And you are not alone. God is with you. You are chosen and called by God. You are a unique gift to the body of Christ. God is pleased with you. You are fearfully and wonderfully May God is working all things together for your good. God delights in you. You are forgiven and set free. You are a reflection of God's love. God's plans for you are still going to happen. God's plans for you are still going to happen. God's plans for you are still going to happen. You are a testimony of God's faithfulness. You are Consistency does not go unnoticed. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You are worth it. Yes, yes, yes. I speak this over your life. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, let's go home. Here we go. Initially, I thought that the leper who came back was disobedient. <laughs> I, I thought he was being disobedient because, watch this, all ten 
were instructed by Jesus to go show yourself to the priest. That was their instruction. The text says that as they walked, they were made whole. Yeah. That's what the text says. Yeah. Yeah. The text says nine of them follow instructions to show themselves to the priest. Yeah. Yeah. One of them turns around, coming back to Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we got a spiritual conundrum because we have to ascertain. Who was right? Wow. Were the nine right? Mm. Or was the one right? <laughs> God is good. <laughs> May I make a theological argument that the nine were right and the one was righteous? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We're so used to following instructions out of ritualism that they just wanted to be right. They just wanted to do the right thing. They, the, the, the thing that they were supposed to do by law, the acceptable thing. But one of them said to himself, ritualism with a priest might be right, but I'd rather have a relationship with the priest. And the text is telling us the difference between being right and righteous in this instance is relationship. Yeah. This one.